hello guys welcome to the channel in this lesson i am going to show you how to use hsl secondary in premiere pro to access hsl secondary you're going to head over to your limetry color now to access your limetry color in case you don't have it within your open panels you can head over to window now within window you're going to check the limetry color panel this one right here so when you check that it's going to open the lumetri color on your screen now within the lumetri color you have the hsl secondary down here now hsl secondary is for color correction it is what you use after you must have done your color grading in your project it is used for basic or it is used for color correction just like in this example i am going to show you so let's get started so right here on my timeline i have this image sorry i have this video Right here, as you can see, is basically a video of a model dancing, which I downloaded from Pixabay. HSL secondary, it is used to target specific colors and redefine them with the help of the hue, saturation, and luminosity, or luma, which is the HSL itself. So right here within HSL, HSL is divided into key, we have key, refine, and then correction. So we are going to start from key. Now, key is basically targeting a color or selecting a color within the image or within the video or the clip. So let's target a color on this image right now, or let's key a color on this image right now. Let's say the red color right here. Let's say we want to change the color or want to give the color red or this red color a different feel so we're going to have to select the red color now to select a color we have this eyedroppers button right here or this eyedroppers right here so we have this first one it is basically to select a color so i can just so with the eyedropper selected i can just simply click on the color and then down here within the hsl the hue saturation and luminosity you see that the color range has been selected right here. Now, these gray parts are the color ranges that have been selected. So if I want to add, let's say I want to add more colors to it that I want to target, I want to target more color, I want to key more colors, I can simply hold the, or select the eyedropper, this plus eyedropper button, this middle one with the plus icon to it. So this is for basically adding colors. So I could just select that as, okay, I want to add this, blue the blue shirt to it you see immediately i do that the range has increased so that's that and then next to the eyedropper plus i have the eyedropper minus if i can call them that so if i select that with that i can subtract colors so i just added a color a second color and the range has expanded so let's say i don't want that color anymore i don't want to select that color or i don't want to key that color anymore i can simply select the minus eyedropper button and then click on the color once more and you see the range has gone back to what it was earlier the red color i selected earlier so down here you have this color gray when i check this you see that it gives me this alpha channel kind of look now with this i can see what colors i have selected or what part of the color range I selected, I have selected or I have keyed. Now this will help me do a precise job. Now the entire trouser is not selected. With this view, I'll be able to see what is selected and what is not selected. So to be able to select the entirety, I will have to increase the ranges of either the HSL second uh, saturation or the luminous or the luma rather. Or I might have to just increase every one of them. Most of the time when you select a particular color or you select a particular color range, the HSL secondary, you will not be able to do much with it because the range has already been selected. Now what you can do is to work with the saturation and the luma. So if I increase the luma range, for example, mind you, this top right here is to increase the range, right? You see, as I move the triangle on top, you see that it adds more selection. The down one right here, the bottom triangle right here is to, is to further out the range. So I can increase this. 
the more I increase it, you see that the range is expanded to other parts of the image that I don't want it to expand to. You can see, I can see some details right here on our arms and our face and the background as well. So I don't want that. So I'm going to reduce the, the saturation range a bit more right there. So I can no longer see the details that were selected earlier. So I'm going to make sure it's a little bit perfect. Now I'm going to move to luminous, the L, the luminous or the luma rather, sorry. Now I'm going to increase the range of the luma. So as I increase it, you see that more parts of the color is being added, but it's still picking up some details on the body or that part of the uh, video, which I don't want. So I'm going to decrease that a bit. And then I'm going to increase the feathering so I can pick more colors, All right? Now, if you want to do a more detailed work, you can just make sure that the part that you want keyed or selected, is completely selected, not minding any other part of the image that is being selected. Just make sure that the area you want to select is selected. So when you are done with your adjustments, you can go, you can go back and then mask those places out that you don't want, those excess that were selected, you can mask them out. Now, if you don't know how to mask and you want to learn how to mask or what masking is, you can check out this video up here or you can click the link in the description to learn more about masking. But if you are doing a rough job like this, you can just um, make sure that you get the best out of it by playing around with the luminous, by playing around with the hue, saturation and luma. So that is it. I've been able to select most parts of the areas that I want. So that is it for keying. Now we let's go to refine. Under refine, you can denoise your selection. For example, you can see as I adjust the value of the denoise, it gets rid of some of the unnecessary selection we made. Why blow right here blows the selection. Now we don't need to do that. That's fine. Next, we have correction. Within correction, you can either do a general correction that affects everything or you can target the shadows the mid-tones or highlights now if you want to learn more about color we and match you can head over to the description to click on the link to a video or you can click on the one up here now if you are familiar with color wheel this should be a work in the park for you so this is used to adjust the brightness of the color as you can see as i move the slider down you see the color here becomes dark. If I move it up, it becomes brighter. So that is the idea. So with the color wheel, I can infuse some color details to the selection or to the kit part. So if I move it to this purple part, you see that the color changes based on the colors that I'm selecting. You see, it's giving you, it infuses a bit of blue right to the so that is it. So I can down here you can down here you can work on the temperature. You can also adjust the temperature of a selection tint. You can also increase the contrast or adjust the contrast, sharpen, and then um saturation as well. Now when I head over to the color wheel part, now within the shadow mid-tone and Highlights. I can decide to infuse different colors to the shadows, the mid-tones, and the highlights. I can select them. I can infuse different colors in them. Like I said, if you know how color wheels work, this should be very easy for you. So if you want to learn more about color wheels, you can. Now, if you want to learn more about color wheels, you can check out the video in the description or click on the link up here. So that is it, guys. Now, when I remove this from the color gray, now, when I removed it from color gray, here is the before and here is the after. So that is it, guys. That is how to use HSS secondary in Premiere Pro. It is used to target specific colors and then modify those colors if need be. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and also do word subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I post a new video. 
Thank you. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.